Good morning, everyone. God is so good, and his faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Don's going to come with a few announcements, and then we're going to... Uh, Maybe we'll do it a little bit different. Praise the Lord. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace as we trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I praise God for the men and women, the brave men and women who served our country to allow us to live in peace and, uh, and here we don't live in war. I'm not quite so sure that we know what it's like. We remember those who have given their lives in service and we honor the families of those who have lost loved ones. Their courage and sacrifice are a lasting foundation of our faith. At this time, we're going to share with you a video before we pray. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. So today, during this time of national remembrance, as proud Canadians, we thank God for those who gave their lives as the last full measure of devotion for Canada, the true North, strong and free. Today, we thank God, our Father, Jesus Christ, his Son, and the Holy Spirit for service in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, various NATO and United Nations missions. Those remembered today include Army, Navy, Air Force, Merchant Marine veterans, and police officers who have represented Canada overseas during times of conflict and peace. As Christians, today we offer deep gratitude for freedom, the freedom to worship, freedom to pray and to offer witness, the freedom to love as Christ has loved us, and the freedom to practice our faith. So let us not take that freedom for granted. Today our hearts are full of gratitude because we are free. Today we are thankful and we remember. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each one here today and for those that are watching online. I pray in Jesus' name that Canadians would always be mindful of the cost of our freedom to worship you. I pray that we would be a people who remember with gratitude and uphold their legacy with us. 
I pray for our wounded warriors who bear losses both in their body and spirit. I pray for healing to the veterans who continue to suffer, easing their pain, healing their pain, and restoring them. I pray for their communities, that they would be sources of comfort and support, providing the encouragement and care that they need. I pray for the church who carries your presence, that we would be vessels of peace to those veterans who are hurting, bringing comfort and healing to their hearts and hope in their future. Father, I pray for those that are gathered who may be hurting. In Jesus' name, I pray for their those that have lost loved ones during any of your peacekeeping missions. I pray, Father, that as we gather together, that you would bring us sight, new sight, because of your presence in this place. For those that are watching online, I pray peace that surpasses understanding would come and guard their hearts and that they would realize that real peace comes from within. And that you would help us to enter into that peace. Help us in our service today to bring honor and glory to your great name. In Jesus' name, amen. Don's going to come with some announcements. Good morning, everyone. It's a Sunday to be thankful and to remember. Uh, my dad had three sisters, who all married uh, veterans of the Second World War. But years later, I had the privilege of doing taxes in H&R Block for this uh, little old man. He would come in, and he was so funny. And one day he said, you know, I'm a Holocaust survivor. I said, no kidding. He said, oh, yeah. And he rolled up his sleeve, and he showed me his tattoo. And he said, the reason I survived was because of this young girl that would throw fruit and apples over the fence, and I would eat them. And uh, he said, after we were liberated, I got out and I found her, and I married her. And they were married for, I forget how many years, he adored her, adored her. And it's hard to believe that in this country we have so much freedom, but in other countries they do not have the freedom to worship and to gather and it's an honor to support our missionaries that are in a country like that, that have to hide their faith and go under, not undercover almost, and live in, I'm not going to say fear, but they, they live in a, a discretion that says, okay, I have to be careful. And so I want to share with, with you the write-up from our, uh, our missionaries, and it's called God Is. Now, I could go sit down after that and just say, God is, and I could go sit down, and that would be that, and that would be enough. But it says, God is, was the theme of our fall outreach this year. On the final night, five of our seniors got up to share their testimonies, including one young man who became a Christian last year during our fall outreach. He shared a story about how he had reached a point of desperation due to abuse of a, at a former school and which caused him to reach a point where he no longer wanted to live. And in the midst of that moment, he remembered one of my leadership students who had been witnessing to him repeatedly telling about how God loved him and had changed his life. And he took a chance. He came to the outreach and found the hope in Jesus. And he had been serving God ever since. Amen. 
God is good, and it says we have a single mom who works with us, whom he, we've become very close over the past three and a half years. And her husband had passed away, and before that, she and her husband had spent many years in Hong Kong. And so this year for October break, they had decided that she would take her two kids and go back to Hong Kong for a visit. About two days before they were to leave, we saw her driving out of the school parking lot, looking very distraught. She caught sight of Nancy and I and immediately stopped us and began to share her situation. Her wallet and her visa and her passports had all gone missing. Without those items, she couldn't go back. Nancy said, we should pray that Jesus, because he knows where they are. Almost as soon as she started, she felt the Holy Spirit give her an idea in her mind, and she shared it with our friend. The lady said it would be impossible for it to be in, the spot, in that spot because that was six hours ago, and so even if she'd left it there, it was, it was in her purse and it would be gone. So they, uh, Nancy pressed in everything and said, no, let's, let's go. And uh, I feel like we need to go there and look. As soon as they got there, Nancy jumped out and ran with her, where our friend had left her grocery cart. And there in the cart was a woman's wallet and her ID, her credit cards, everything was untouched. After that, they had a little hallelujah moment. Nancy told her friend that perhaps God allowed them this to remind you that he's got you and you're not alone. I wanted to close with a thought, that thought because it was true for, uh, for as much for her as it is for us that we, God is with you and you are not alone. Uh, every, try to, every month I try to read out of our Missions Global out of, uh, from our POC and this morning I was listening to the radio and they were talking about Ukraine and earlier this week I had chosen this and it says shining the light on Ukraine. And Ukraine is back in the news and we're hearing it again and it says the war in Ukraine is intensifying and yet God is piercing the darkness using a group of Pentecostal churches to become beacons of light in the communities ravaged by war. There's a pastor of the Good News Church in uh, Boltov, Ukraine has planted a total of 15 churches, seven of them since, uh, since the war has started. God is moving so mightily that many of these churches are becoming overcrowded. Thanks to generous supporters, we're helping four of these churches to purchase property. One of these churches literally had its first service in a vegetable garden with 35 adults, multiple children, and even some chickens. Just a week prior, a team from Good News Church traveled to that village to bring food and clothing and medical supplies. And because of this, they said, we want you to come back. And team has been praying and seeing healings, and God is moving, even in, in the middle of a war. So today, as we remember, I'd ask you to come and bring your, bring your missions offering, and let's, let's share, shine a light to those that you know, can't shine it openly like we can here. And let's pray for our missionaries. Lord, we just lift them to you today. Lord, and for their work that they do. Lord, I just pray that their light would shine in that darkness, that you would continue to work through them, and give them wisdom, Lord, and bring those that are hurting and, lo and lonely, that you bring them to you because you are, God is. You are the one that is with us. You are above us and around us, before us and behind us. And Lord, we lift Ukraine to you. And it's uncertainty. But you know, Lord, you are certain. You work in wars. And you work through those, Lord, that are there and the pastors. And we pray for the pastors that are leading these churches and planting these churches, that you would protect them and be with them. And that work would continue. We just give you honor, and we thank you, and we, rem we remember today, and we th are so thankful. We give thanks for our freedoms and the freedom to be here this morning. We just never let us take that for granted. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We also have Samaritan Purse shoe boxes that we are filling for Christmas, and our deadline is next Sunday through Wednesday. 
So if you haven't picked up a, a shoebox yet, and make sure you take one of these. The instructions in the, are there on what you can include in your box. And then you just choose the age of a boy or a girl and, and stick that on your box. So we appreciate you doing that. The deadline is next Sunday or the Wednesday the 20th. And tomorrow is Remembrance Day. So if you're able to attend the service at the Cenotaph, uh, be there a little bit early. They always start on time. You want to see the march in. So that'll be before 11 o'clock tomorrow at City Hall. Tuesday, ladies, is Encouraging Sisters, 10 o'clock. And uh, we encourage you to all to come and, and encourage one another, pray together, and, and have fun. Praise the Lord. If you've never attended one of our ladies' groups, you're welcome to come at uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Wednesday night at 6 p.m. is our prayer meeting. Friday service, 6.30 with the Filipinos. Powerful spirit of God here Friday night. God is so good as we worship together. It doesn't seem to matter who gets together. As long as God is there and his presence, that's the most important thing. And men, next Saturday morning, we're not quite sure if it's 8 or 8.30. Filipinos were announcing 8. We were saying 8.30, so come at 8. <laughs> and just fellowship together. But please sign the list. They need to know how many will be attending the breakfast Saturday morning for men. So please sign that. And um, just get a calendar for all the other events. And I think that's, that's it for the announcements. Let's stand together if you are able and let's worship the Lord. Worship him. Father of life, draw me closer. Lord, my heart is set on you. Let me run the race of time with your love and folding mind, and let the peace of God let it reign. Father of life, Father of life, draw me closer. Lord, my heart is set on you. Let me run the race of time with your love and falling mine, and let the peace of God let it reign. Oh, Holy Spirit, Lord, I comfort you, my comfort, strengthen and hold. upon your truth, bringing glory unto you, and let the peace of God, let it bring, oh Lord, I hunger, oh Lord, I hunger for more of you, and your healing power breathe life and make me whole and let the peace of God let it bring oh Holy Spirit oh Holy Spirit of my comfort strength strengthen me and hold my 
praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Turn around and, and uh, give somebody a fist pump, but don't pump them too hard, but just say, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Oh, we have so much to praise the Lord for. Glory to God, glory to God. Well, the last few weeks we've mentioned that our Messiah Yeshua did not come to overthrow Romans. He came to destroy the very works of the devil. Boy, oh boy. If the devils had known what they were doing when they crucified Jesus, they'd have not done it. Praise God. Jesus said the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. He said, some will say it's here, it's there, it's over here, but the kingdom of God, Jesus said, is already among you. And when you're a family member, I'm talking about a family, family of God, the angel of the Lord encamps about them the fear I mean, they guard around about you. He surrounds and he defends all that fear him. Praise the Lord. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but is a living life of goodness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We've been talking about the last number of weeks about the differences between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world. And I want to continue with that because uh, I just think that it's necessary that we, uh, that we chat about what the kingdom of God looks like. We have discovered that the kingdom of God looks and acts like Jesus. Whew. Praise the Lord. It, it consists of people graciously embracing one another sacrificing themselves in service to others. And, uh, I think we're going to head in that direction. That is uh, what it looks like to serve one another. I can see you're already excited about that. Boy, oh boy. It consists of people, the kingdom of God consists of people trusting and employing power under rather power over as the Romans did they ruled putting people down they conquered uh, and true servants of Jesus Christ don't try to conquer manipulate the people of God don't try and control the, con the kingdom of God consists of people imitating our Savior who died for us and he died for all people. This is not an exclusive group, but it is for an exclusive group. Just saying, because narrow is the way, and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said, that he said, my kingdom is not of this world. It is in great contrast to the kingdoms of this world in every possible big difference. Turn to your neighbor. Big difference in the kingdom of God. There's a contrast of trust. There's a contrast of aim. There's a contrast of scope. There's a contrast of responses. And there's certainly a contrast of battles. Praise the Lord. I mentioned all those to you last week. And I'll tell you what, in the kingdom of God, 
the lame see, the lame walk, the blind see. I'll try and get that part right. Something. Seeing people walking. Well, that's good. Because he said, Jesus said, heal the sick. And then tell them the kingdom of God is now. For the kingdom of God, Corinthians 4 says, the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, but it's living by the power of God. Praise God. Whew, that's big. Jesus said, if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. He said, Jesus said, seek the kingdom of God above all else. And he'll give you everything he needs. Well, the kingdom of God is vastly different from the kingdom of the world. Jesus said in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. Do you know the mindset of the Jewish people at that time? They were looking for a Messiah that would come and take care of the Romans. And Jesus was not sitting there or standing or traveling about. Oh, how am I going to take this? He wasn't worried about me. He just wasn't worried about me. He says, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. Well, you know, Peter tried. They were getting ready to take Jesus away. And Peter, well, you know, Peter is one of the three special guys to Jesus, I guess. But he's the one that takes it sword. I don't know what in the world he had a sword there. But the Bible says he's numbered with, transgress with transgressors. So Peter takes out a sword and whacks off the guy's ear. Now he's earless. And Jesus takes that, that ear and puts it back on the lad. Well, that would be enough for me to step back and take notice. A miracle right in front of your eyes. I don't know why that guy, he, the Bible doesn't say what he did after his ear was put, ear was put back on. I know one of the fellows that just recently lost a finger not on from his hand. I don't know how that made you feel. I don't know. My father-in-law, he chopped off one of his fingers in the, in the winter time and uh, missing like played fiddle. I don't know how he fiddled with that thing. But he was able to do it. But Jesus puts a ear on his in his Whew. that's the power of God because of the kingdom of God. The law. You know the kingdom of the world tells you you can make as you should make as much money as you possibly can. You ought to get rich since wealth equals a good and a happy and a successful life. But the kingdom of God says, learn to be content with what you have. If you have your basic necessity, you are doing well. Be grateful. In fact, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys, where thieves break in and steal, and stock markets plunge, and currencies are devalued, housing, markets, plate. But store up for yourselves treasures where the true wealth is, where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Praise the Lord. That's the kingdom of God. It talks about the kingdom of God is concerned about your heart. See, where your, where your heart is. The kingdom of the world says play it safe. Don't stand out. Don't make waves. Don't rock the boat. Don't go against the crowd. Go with the majority. Majority is always right. Go with the majority. It's, it's important to be accepted in, you know. 
make sure that you receive approval from men. It's, it's okay to be religious, but just keep your religion to yourself. Don't offend anyone by telling them that they need to believe in God or decide. Live a good life, but keep quiet so that you can live a safe and comfortable life. The kingdom of God, says the world, is utterly lost. And people are dead in their trespasses under the domination of a satanic. The majority is not always right. The majority is wrong about ultimate. Don't go along. God is not going to come down from heaven and preach for us. We are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. We are a royal priesthood. We must tell the good news of salvation through the Messiah. We must work with God and fulfill the great commission. Don't fear those who can kill the body, but are able to kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both the body and the soul. Don't worry what people say about you. In fact, you are blessed if you have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. You are blessed when people insult you and persecute you. Who likes to be there? Well, well, you are blessed to falsely say all manner of evil against you, even if it's false. Well, rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophet who were before you. When it comes time to genuine religion, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter in that way, for the gate is really small, and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. It doesn't matter what the what is important that you gain God's approval. And the only way that you gain God's approval is to receive him as Christ, receive him as Lord, as Savior. The kingdom of the world tells you a little religion is okay, but don't take it too seriously. Give it little acknowledgement. Well, maybe on holiday, perhaps a few other occasions during the year, but certainly not 24 hours a day, seven days. If you do that, you be a religious fanatic. Why waste, why waste your life in all that overdone religion? Well, the God said, meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. <laughs> it's totally different. Praise the Lord. Be filled with the Spirit. Oh, not just a one-time happy. But be filled with the Spirit continually. Pray without ceasing. Share the good news day after day, in season and out of season, whether you feel like it or not. Become intimately connected to the Messiah's holy communion. That means connected to the family. Hallelujah. See, the world wants to isolate, but in the kingdom of God, it's a different deal. We sing to one another psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of the world tells, love yourself first. Well, love your family. Spare a little love for your neighbor, too. You don't need to love those who are outside your family. Oh, by the way, the 
world says, hate your enemy. Do unto others before they do unto you. But in the kingdom of God, love God even more than life. The Messiah said, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and head toward suffering and death. Follow me. The one who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life and gives it up for gives up his own interests and plans and priorities and desires for my sake will find last. For what profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The one who loves father or mother, son or daughter more than me, not worthy of me. Yes, love your family and love your people and nation, but your love doesn't stop there. For you ought to love your neighbor and the whole world is your neighbor, even those who are different from you, even those that don't perhaps bear your faith yet. We love our enemies. We try and do good, what's best for them. We do unto others as you would have them do to you. The kingdom of the world tells us, you are to be happy. You're to be self-assured and self-confident in your ability, in control of your circumstances. You can do it. But the kingdom of God says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. You'll be happy when you understand you are not you, you are not that impressive outside of a holy, righteous, good God. Apart from what what we do with God, we're connected to God. All that we do on our own vain useless and meaningless and empty without eternal significance. Apart from him, we can accomplish nothing significant, nothing lasting, nothing rewarding. Only those things that are worked in God, accomplished, or that are accomplished in God and for God will last. Here's the bottom line of that. You are not in control. Why don't you turn and face to your neighbor? You tell them this, you are not in control. God is, and you can trust him and his grace and his love, and his goodness and his faithfulness and his mercy that's new and fresh every day. The kingdom of the world tells you it's very important that you are happy. So always do those things that will enhance your own personal happiness. Avoid situations, people with problems, visiting people in hospitals. Instead, try and have as much fun as you can. But the kingdom of God says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Life in this fallen, sinful, temporal world is not about having fun or being happy all the time. There is so it's so much more there's so much more important work for us to do. And time is limited. Use your time wisely and redemptively. Focus the focus of your life is about redemption, it's about salvation, it's about sacrifice. It doesn't center on us having I like fun. In fact, I like games. I like board games. I didn't say I was bored in games. But I do. God doesn't mind us enjoying life and having fellowship with our friends. In fact, somebody just recently, I won't do, but somebody recently said all they do here in New Brunswick is eat. Well, we do enjoy we do enjoy having fellowship one with the other. You know, they did it. In fact, we don't do much of this today. 
But in the early church, they were going from house to house. They thought they were living in last. They were going from house to house, and they were having communion. Oh, but we are past. You know past. Ought to know. You all need to know that we only have communion for Sunday. But they went from house to house, and they had for as often take of the bread and cup. I, I have to tell you, celebrate, especially in our home. Kingdom of God, well, the kingdom of the world tells us be tough, be aggressive, make sure that you're first, then you will be successful. But the kingdom of God says, blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Be kind to people, especially to those who are hurting and disadvantaged. Put others' interests ahead of your own, but don't always. But you don't always win. You don't always come in first. Make the most money, have the best position, or have the most fame. Don't. I have to tell you, I I'm playing a game. I I don't play to lose. Oh, some of you encourage. Because I play the win. I like to. But I don't get all mad and upset. No. We just enjoy one another's company. And it's awful good when they have and care. Some people think that the only time, you know, they can have people over fellowship people, it's always a big me. There's that always. But, you know, it, it, it can be over just a cup of tea and maybe a cookie. It doesn't have to be much to have fellowship. It's the law. I don't know why I put, it, I put that in. Not in. You know, I only preach with you. I don't. The kingdom of the world tells us seek power and fame and influence and money and recognition. That's the only one, one way you can be happy in life. But the Bible says the kingdom of God says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Ooh, that's big. Wow. Get in a right relation with God. And I'm speaking to not only you that are in this building, but those that are watching online. Boy, oh boy, get in right relation with God and do things His way. And that is the way we can have happiness. In fact, there is a difference between happiness and joy. You see, happiness is based on circumstances, joy is not based on circumstances. It goes much deeper. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. So I believe that it's a necessity if we wish to be strong in the Lord to focus our attention on Him. If you're depressed, you do not have to stay in that place of depression. You turn your eyes on Jesus and you look full. Matter of fact, I'll sing the song because it just bears singing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dear in the light of his glory and faith. Oh, the most people know. Praise the Lord. It's not just a song. It's 
words that can be a reality if you practice it. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of the world tells us, okay, you ought to cut moral and ethical corners as long as you're not caught. No one sees. Everyone lies. Everyone cheats. No big. <laughs> While I'm reading those words, if you cut moral and ethical corners, I'll tell you a little story, if you don't mind. I haven't told the story. But when I was in Bible school, we, uh, if we did something that was not according to the rules, one of the things that you uh, weren't supposed to do was leave your room after 11 o'clock. So some, I won't mention Okay, I did. I, I snuck out. And, you know, some of my friends snuck out. In fact, even during exam, they would sneak. They would find somewhere to go out to a coffee shop down the road, somewhere down there. Sometimes the staff would sneak around and see who was talking about. But we would come back, sneak back in. Had to sneak. Now we were on the first floor. Ours wasn't bad because, well, our room was on the first floor of a three story building. It was an old condemned hospital. That's what it was. We went there. They got a facility, had a nice facility. Spot, hard to sneak out of. But in this old hospital, oh yes, there was an old here in that old hospital compound, condemned many, many years, built during the war. Well, we would sneak out, and I would sneak back in, and undoubtedly our, our floor monitor would come along and say, Ron, did you sneak out? That's a pretty pointed question. Well, I always, I had a, a little rule that I lived by back then. I say back then. Because my little rule was always tell the truth. Just don't tell the whole truth. Well, and I'll tell you why. Because when we did that, well, we got these, we were charged with a two or two, two and two, or three and three, or one and one. If you got a one and one, it was a dollar, and you had one to, to um, point against you. And if you got a two and two, that was two dollars and two points. If you got a three and three, that was three dollars and three points. Well, you get the picture. But if you got five, that was five dollars. And to students back then, that was a state. But it wasn't only five points. You had to go up before the board, and uh, well, you had to explain why you did what you did. And if you got a ten and a ten, it was immediate dismissal. I never was brought up before, so I was pretty good at telling the whole truth. Not just the whole. Well. There, I've confessed my wrong to you and the Lord. Well, he... But, the, the, you know, the kingdom of God says, Blessed are the pure heart, they shall see God. The invisible and all-knowing God sees your innermost, your motive, and your inner purity or lack of purity. So be pure in heart. Be true to being. Have a good and godly, have good and godly moments. Serve the Lord from your heart. Don't be liars because all liars end up in a lake of fire. Did I just say that? There's a lot of sins. You know, one sin's not bigger than the other. 
lot of sins that people will find themselves in hell for if they don't come under the tutorship of the Holy Spirit, under the guidance of God, and having the blood of Jesus cleanse, clean them out. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. And by the way, I got forgiveness a long time ago for what I did in Bible school days. Thus say it. The kingdom of God, or the kingdom of the world, says if somebody slaps you on the cheek, punch him in the face. Never apologize. The world is a jungle. Only the fittest survive. Don't be afraid to use force. I mean, the army with the best weapons you can win, you got to destroy your enemy. But in the kingdom of God, it says, Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemaker. Don't be quick to retaliate, to punish others for sins against you. Be quick to forgive. Have God's perspective. Human beings may hurt you, but they don't realize that they are doing wrong, that you are precious in God's sight. You redeem those messed up moments by forgiving them, not harming them back. The kingdom of the world tells you there are no absolutes, no rights, no wrongs. It's a journey that is important, not arriving at your destination. Truth is relative. There's only, there's not, there's not one way to do this life. There is no divinely inspired book why they stop uh, reading the Bible in school. They'll tell you the Bible's not true. Be tolerant of all opinions, all religions, all philosophies, all ideas. They are all equal, valid, equally good, equally true, except for Christians. You're a bad person to say that I'm if you insist that I am wrong, then you don't practice tolerance. Big one. And they feel that they can persecute. But the kingdom of God says there are absolutes. There are things that are right and things that are wrong. The creator has said what is right and wrong. How many times in his word does he say, Thou shall not. The Lord is the God of truth. Yeshua is truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The only way to God and to have the eternal life is by receiving the word of God. The Holy Scripture are divinely inspired. God's Spirit moved and breathed on holy men and they wrote down what must be communicated. No, I tell you, there are absolutes. There are right and wrong. The kingdom of the world tells us don't believe the miracles of the Bible. They're, that, that, they, uh, that the Bible is infinitely wise and powerful that God is infinitely wise and powerful. Well, you don't need to respect them. Instead, seek the miraculous through the occult, the age, and other philosophy. But the kingdom of, of God says, the creator made the universe, the earth, and everything in it. The moon, the sun, the billions of galaxies, the multiple trillions of stars. Is there anything too difficult for him? What is parting the Red Sea to God? What is the virgin earth? How, how wonderful that is. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead in his resurrection. lives in you and I. One day Jesus is coming.
coming again. Praise the Lord. I can journey through life knowing we have a return Savior. What God is there that can say that? Wow. All the miracles described in the Bible are, well, they are basically very simple to do. Don't get involved in false and demonic miracles, false prophets, oh, wrong, dangerous abominations of God, and it's a dead end. In Revelation 11, Verse 15, it says, The seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there was a loud, there were loud voices shouting in heaven. You think we can shout here? But the shouts of heaven. There were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he, he will reign forever and ever. Well, that's a shout. I would love to hear. Praise the Lord. You know what happens after that. Twenty-four elders sitting on their thrones before God fell down on their faces to the ground. Yeah, those 24 hours were on thrones, but now they're on their face. 24 of them sitting on their thrones fell with their faces to the ground, and they worshipped. Boy, oh boy. We're so used to standing and raising our hands, and there's nothing wrong with that. The Bible tells us. But when it comes time, boy, being in the presence of the Lord, there are times I just, I can't help. I got to get down on my face. And they said, we give thanks to you, Lord God, the Almighty, the one who is and who always was. For now you have assumed your great power and have begun to reign. Praise the Lord. People think that the kingdom of God is just nothing. But if you remain in the kingdom of the world and do nothing by refusing to transfer your allegiance, your citizenship to the kingdom of God, by refusing to turn away from the world's corrupt values, and if you remain under the power of the God of this world, you will share the same destiny as those that are a part of the kingdom of the world. You must repent. You must turn from sin. And you must acknowledge Jesus as Savior and Lord. In fact, you must be born again and receive the new life of Jesus Christ. Jesus paid your way into the kingdom of God by shedding his blood. Praise the Lord. Our challenge is, well, to be in this world, but not of it. We're not sharing their corrupt values, their priorities, or interests. Our challenge is to enter the kingdom of God, which is invisible to us right now and may not seem very real. But actually, it is more real. Which kingdom are you? Which kingdom do your values light up, line up with? What kingdom interests and priorities do you reflect? Which kingdom do you want to be part of? Does what you do reflect the kingdom of God? What is it that you are seeking? What is your suitcase filled up with? Yes, 
we remember the sacrifice of our, of our soldiers. But the greatest sacrifice came from Praise the Lord. In Exodus 23, it says, verse 25, you must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water, and I will protect you from illness. There will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land, and I will give you long, full life. Father in heaven, thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. You may be in this room, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal You don't have to. You can come to him now. You're watching online. You don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord. In fact, you may not even be sure which kingdom you're in. You know, oftentimes people pray. In fact, you can probably pray it with our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Forever. If you are here and you don't know Jesus, you can do one of two things. You can either sit where you are and somebody will come to you and you can come to the, the sides and up in front. Or, well, you can also talk to somebody that may be near. They can lead into uh, a time where you can come in. God, you're watching online. There is a number that you can call and you can find Jesus. We've got people with prayer tags that are also, they're already started to go into the, the aisles. They can help you and lead you to the personal knowledge of the Son of God. And you know what? You do not even have to uh, with with the, some of the things that are in your body. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace, the punishment of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. The provision is there. But will you be a participant in the kingdom of God and allow the kingdom of God to minister to you? I'm going to pray. And again, you can stay in your seat. You can go to the aisles. You can give a call on the phone. We can put the phone number up on the screen for you. Thank you, Father, for the grace, your great grace. You can move even while I'm praying. I thank you, Father, for the love, your love. I thank you for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to bring a heaven to earth, bring peace to where there's fear, bring life where there's death, Bring joy in their tears. Bring love where there's hate. Bring hope where there's pain. 
Bring rest where there's chaos. Bring faith where there's hopelessness. You have invited us to partner with you in prayer, to see your kingdom and your will to be done. We understand that we are not just blessed to be blessed, but we are blessed to bless a world that is in pieces. We are loved so that we can love where love is not. We are changed because we've been changed by your power. We are freed to work and be your hands and feet, O oh God. Help us in our unbelief. Restore your people to the purpose and the power you have created them within them to receive provision and protection as your son God. We cry out to you, O oh God. Change the atmosphere by our surrender to the purposes of your kingdom. For your kingdom come and your will to be done in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.